Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the relationship between annual rates of interest and annual rates of discount. So recall, if P is initially invested, then after one year, you get P times 1 plus I, where here I is the effective annual rate of interest. So I, I is the effective annual rate of interest. In this model, what happens is the following. In this model, you start at time zero, this is your time zero with P, and then you're given at time t equals one, your P and then your IP. So you get interest and then you have your initial principal and then you have your interest over here. So now what happens is that that is the effective annual rate of interest. So how can we formulate this? So we know that interest I is gonna be your P at time one minus your P at time over time zero over your P at time zero. So here P of T, so P of T is the amount in your account. This is the account balance at time t, okay? That's what the effective annual rate of interest is. It's the amount that you have in your account at time one minus the initial amount, that's the amount of interest that's accrued over the initial amount that you put in, okay? There's an alternative way of doing this, and that's the discount way. So in the, in the interest way, you get all of your interest at the end of the period. At the discount way, you get all of your interest at the beginning of the period. So we define the effective annual rate of discount to be D. And what is the rate of discount? It's going to be a little bit variant of this, this definition over here. What it is, is going to be P of 1 minus P of 0 over, not P of 0 any longer, but P of 1, the time at high 1. So let's understand what this effective rate of discount actually is, okay? Now, there's a relationship between discount and interest. Let's figure out what that is. So what we're going to do is we claim that there's a relationship over here. And so what's the relationship? So we claim, we claim that D, the effective rate of discount, is I over 1 plus I. So let's verify that over here. Let's see how, how we can figure out this formula. Well, let's look at this quantity over here. So here's the proof of this fact over here, the proof of that fact. So what is I? We can do this in any number of different ways over here. But the easiest way to sort of see this is to just look at, just algebraically manipulate this. So what's D? So D, so let's look at I, which is P of one minus P of zero over P of zero. That's my I over one plus P of one minus P of zero over P of zero. So what is this whole expression over here? If we carefully think about this, what this over here is, this is my rate I, and this is my, again, this copy of I. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom of this expression by P0. So if we do that, what we're gonna get, so take this whole expression over here, I don't change it if I multiply the top and bottom by P0, because P0 over P0 is equal to one, so it doesn't modify this expression over here. So what will this give me? This is gonna give me a P1 minus P0 all over what? Well, that's gonna be a P0. And then what's this gonna give me? The P0 will cancel that denominator, so I'll have a what? P1 minus P0. The P0s are gonna cancel over here, and you're just gonna have P1 minus P0 over P1, and that's the expression we're calling our D. So we've just proven that D is equal to I over one plus I. Now, what this tells me is the following. So I have two equivalent payment streams now, and so we're gonna relate these things to their payment streams. And so what happens is this. So we have the relationship that P0, one minus D to the negative one is equal to P0, one plus I. So that is our equivalent relationship over here. 
And so that tells me how I can relate the initial payments to the discount and the interest. So what discount represents, it represents getting all of the interest initially and letting that interest grow to the same, to the same value eventually. So we get that initial amount of discount at the, at the initial time. All right, excellent. So this is the relationship between the interest rate I and the discount rate D. And so what we have over here is so discount. So let's make a note over there. So this means, this implies, and this of course stems from this relationship over here, right? And so how, of course, how could we see this? Well, if I look at one minus D, this follows since one minus D is really I plus one over I plus one, that's what one is, I plus one over I plus one, minus I over I plus one. So of course the I's will cancel common denominator, so I have a one over I plus one. But if I do one minus D to the power negative one, what that would be is one minus D to the negative one, therefore by this formula is just one plus I. So that's how I relate the effective rate of discount and the effective rate of interest. I can either use this formula over here that D is equal to I over one plus I, or I can use that one minus D to the negative one is equal to one plus I. And there's one final relationship. Since I know that one over one plus I is the present value factor, I can also say from this that this over here is exactly equivalent to D equals I V. And so I always remember this formula because I just think of it as like a div, like a, like a dividend. So D is equal to I times times V relates the discount factor, the interest, and then the present value factor. So one in all formula. But it's more important to understand this formula over here that P0 1 minus D to the negative 1 is equal to P0 1 plus I because that tells you that the discount is really giving you your interest at the initial time and then letting that grow to the time at time 1. And that relates the interest rate and the effective rate of discount. Thank you very much.